Imagine you're at work and the person next to you suddenly slumped over. What would you do? Most likely, you would immediately call 911 or request emergency assistance. This is the first link in the chain of survival, a four-step intervention process which, if done quickly and efficiently, can help save the lives of victims of sudden cardiac arrest. Presently, sudden cardiac arrest claims over 380,000 lives a year in the United States. But a strong chain of survival can not only dramatically reduce this number, but could double or even triple a victim's chance of survival. This means that in the first minutes after collapse, a victim's chance of survival rests in the hands of you and other bystanders. Yes, I have an emergency. I have a coworker that's fallen. He's not breathing. What do I do? The links in the chain are, first, early recognition of the emergency and activation of the EMS system. We're calling 911. Really fast and hard? Okay. Second, early CPR. Chest compressions, hard and fast, around 100 per minute. Okay. Is anybody here? I really need some help. Christina, what's wrong? Linda, can you get the AED machine? Okay, I called my one. I don't know. Okay, all right, AED. Third, early defibrillation. Use of an AED, automatic external defibrillator, if available. If not, EMS will do this when they get on scene. Okay, I found it. Okay, I found it. Really tired, can you take over and I'll... Oh, okay. Get off the machine. Okay. Okay. So now what do I do? Okay. Put your... Palm right here. Alright. Put your hands okay. over and do really fast. Okay, I remember. Is this right? Yeah, that's good. Let me see if I can figure this out. I've never done this before. CPR with defibrillation within three to five minutes of collapse can produce survival rates as high as 49 to 75 percent. 911 come? Yes, I called 911. Hey, who can tell me what happened? Who can tell me what happened? Uh, he fell down. He's not. Fourth, early advanced life support. The fire department has the knowledge, skills, and equipment to provide advanced life support. However, it may take a few minutes for personnel to get on scene, so it is critical to call early. With help or by yourself you can perform three of the four links in the chain of survival. But as with any chain, the chain of survival is only as strong as its weakest link. A bystander's help does not take EMS out of the equation, it only adds to its strength and effectiveness. So how can you help? All you need is the willingness to act and a few simple skills. Step one, if you see somebody suddenly collapse, check the scene for safety and then see if the person responds to you by tapping them on the shoulder and shouting, are you okay? Step two, briefly check for breathing. Step three, if they don't respond, call or send someone to call 911. Step four, if the person is not breathing or is gasping, prepare to give chest compressions. Kneel beside them and put the heel of one hand on the center of their chest. Place the other hand over that hand, lacing your fingers together. Position your shoulders directly over your hands, keeping your arms straight and your fingers off the chest. Step five, push hard and fast, at least two inches, and then let the chest completely rise before pressing down again. Don't take your hands off the chest, just your weight. Step six, keep going. Do not stop compressions until the person shows signs of life like breathing, the scene becomes unsafe, an automated external defibrillator or AED is ready, or you are too exhausted to continue, or a trained responder takes over. So, would you lend a hand? Most people want to help another in need. However, doubt and uncertainty stop some from taking action right away. I don't know what to do, and I don't want to make the problem worse. If you can't arouse the person and they are not breathing, Odds are their heart has stopped and are already clinically dead. It doesn't get any worse than that. Legally, you can't get in trouble simply starting hands-only CPR by pressing on their chest hard and fast. You at least give them a chance to survive. Even if you break some ribs, they would be glad to have that as opposed to the alternative. 
I'm uncomfortable with giving mouth to mouth. In hands-only CPR, studies have shown that there is enough oxygen in the blood to keep the brain alive for four to six minutes. It just needs to be moved through the body. This can be done by pushing hard and fast on the person's chest about 100 times a minute. No need to put your mouth any place other than on your phone to call 911. Someone else will do it. We would all like to assume that a doctor, police officer, or an off-duty firefighter will magically appear to lend aid. But if that doesn't happen, you are this person's best chance of survival. Anyone can do hands-only CPR. All you need is the willingness to lend a hand. Remember, this is not a science. You are providing life-saving help to this person by calling 911 early and starting chest compressions right away. Don't worry about doing it perfectly. Just do your best. It is better than doing nothing at all. Well, my name is Lewis Mills. Uh, I've always been called Lou, Louie, or Lefty. And for some reason, I have a propensity towards attracting people to help me when I have a heart attack. Uh, my wife, unfortunately, has dementia, and my, uh, my uh, children wished that she were a little closer. We have her in a very nice home uh, in North Phoenix, and uh, they didn't like the idea of having to travel 32 miles to see her. So as a result, I interviewed at a couple of other homes about getting her in there. And I had one particular home I wanted to follow up on. And I asked the lady in the computer room if she could give me a little help. She said, yes, well, my car was parked on the second floor of the uh, ramp, the city ramp over there. So I ran up there, got the information. I came down. I knew I wasn't feeling well. I made it into the lobby of the senior center and I realized I definitely had to sit down. I sat down and uh, in a matter of minutes I passed out there. Uh, my name is Michael Ballard. I work for the city of Chandler. I've been an employee, a full-time employee for about five years now in the recreation division. At the time of the, of the incident, I was at the Chandler Downtown Community Center uh, and I was covering the front desk at the time. And I got a call from our senior center coordinator and she uh, called me and said, Mike, do you know, do you have the AED there? And I responded and said, yes, I do. And uh, ran out the door to the senior center, which is next door. Uh, coming to the doors of the senior center, I see uh, Lou uh, on the, kind of passed out in the chair there, and there was a crowd kind of gathering around him. Um, Loretta, one of our customer service representatives, she was on the phone with 911 at the time and getting instructions from them. And uh, so I go up to Lou and he was unresponsive. I, he. Uh, didn't respond to me shaking him or anything like that. We had a team that kind of helped him lay him down. There were people willing to help and wanting to help. And, um, you know, Nancy was the senior center coordinator, Nancy Jackson, and she uh, was standing over my shoulder watching me as I did it and uh, kind of gave me that reassuring tap, like, yeah, you can do it, Mike, you can do it. My thought process was this. It was, you know, I, I hope he's okay. I hope I hear something because if I have to do CPR, I might hurt this gentleman. Um, so I kind of thought, okay, I'm really gonna have to do it now. I don't hear any breathing, I don't feel any pulse, there's nothing, so here I go. And you know, as I started compressions, you know, I only did a few compressions and, and Lou came back and that was it. Um, everything that I had you know, been trained for and um, you know, read about and studied, 
you know, I was under the impression and I was prepared myself mentally that I was going to be doing compressions until uh, the fire department showed up. But, you know, luckily that wasn't the case and, you know, after only a, you know, half a dozen compressions, he, uh, he came back to us. Those fears that I'm going to do any more damage are, you know, unfounded, you know, with that. and I realize that now after talking with, you know, fire personnel that if I hadn't stepped in, you know, he might not be here with us today. The, really, the first thing I remember was a captain, I believe he was, on the fire department telling me in the ambulance, he said, you're a lucky guy. He said, one of our employees knew, uh, knew CPR, and as a result, he said, you're here today. So this was the, the first time I was ever in that kind of situation. I had never uh, come across someone like that or have been in that uh, situation before where it was all on me. You know, I was the person there that was there to, to help Lou and um, so I was it. I, uh, when we laid him down and I was, you know, trying to feel for a pulse and I knew he wasn't breathing at that time and I couldn't feel a pulse but still I was very hesitant. I was kind of nervous about, I'm really going to do it. I'm really going to start CPR on this guy. And um, I think I, I feel, you know, kind of looking back at the event, I felt like I waited too long. You know, I feel like as soon as I found out he wasn't breathing, I can begin compressions. Um, but I, I kind of hesitated because I was, you know, I was nervous. This was my first experience with it. And I, uh, but, you know, after, you know, a few seconds of realizing that, all right, this is really it, Mike, you better go for it, I, I began compressions. Oh, I, I personally believe that anyone over the age of 12 should probably have some idea of how to render CPR to an individual. You know, it's a valuable tool, it's an essential skill that I think not only all employees for the city of Chandler should have, but, you know, everyone, you know, everyone from, you know, parents to their kids to grandparents, we should all have uh, that essential skill to save someone's life in the event of a crisis. Remember, hands-only CPR can save a life. It's simple and anyone can do it. All you need is the willingness to lend a hand. Well, two hands. Just press hard and fast. You may be the one to make a difference in someone's life today. Are you willing to lend a hand?